Welcome to Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation at Columbia University. Welcome. Wherever you are, good evening, good day, or good morning. I'm Wei Ping Wu, uh, Interim Dean of GSAP. Tonight, we gather in Lenape Hoking, the unceded ancestral homeland of the Lenape peoples. I ask you to join me in acknowledging the Lenape community, their traditional territory, elders, ancestors, and future generations. And in acknowledging as a school that Columbia, like New York City and the United States as a nation, was founded upon the exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples. GSAP is committed to addressing the deep history of erasure of indigenous knowledge in the professions of the built environment generally, and in the Western tradition of architectural education specifically. With this, GSAP commits to confronting these institutional legacies as agents of colonialism and to honoring indigenous knowledge in its curricula. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to this Dean's Lecture by Zhu Pei. Zhu Pei founded Studio Zhu Pei in Beijing in 2005. And from there, he has produced an extraordinary corpus of work that has made him one of the leading figures of his generation. And some of you may have seen uh, some of his work recently exhibited at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. In his design, as you will see in this lecture, Zhu Pei attempts to respond to culture, building connections between a specific culture and re region and the natural environment and architecture. With this corpus of work, Zhu Pei has been recognized with the architecture's most pre prestigious awards and honors, such as Design Vanguard Award from Architectural Record in 2007, AIA Honor Award from AIA International, 2021 Design Awards, and more. His works have been exhibited at world important museums such as MoMAR in New York City, Venice Architecture Biennale, GA Gallery in Tokyo, Centre Pompidou in Paris, Victoria and Arbor Museum in London, and other venues. He also has been selected as an architecture jury member for the Ms. Van der Rohe Award in 2011, Hong Kong Design Week in 2011, and Korea International Competition in 2015 and 2017, and I have IA LA Asia Pacific LA Awards in 2019. One of the leading Chinese architects, Zhu Pei received his master's degree in architecture from both Tsinghua University and University of California at Berkeley and has taught at Harvard and Columbia. He is currently the Dean of the School of Architecture at the Central Academy of Fine Arts in China. So um, again, uh, my great pleasure to welcome Zhu Pei and then we'll have our own faculty, Professor David Benjamin uh, to uh, provide a response and lead the discussion. So Zhu Pei, um, Dean Zhu Pei, this, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome, everybody, to join such a great event. Uh, thank you, Professor Wu, for that kind of introduction. It is a great honor for me uh, to be here again to present, uh, you know, my work, to share my thought with everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, in order to we can start. So my topic tonight is the uh, root of the mind. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on just the one project, Imperial Q Museum. 
to represent my design philosophy. And also I try to use some image, uh, including the some uh, construct structure form, construction detail and the material decision making to explain how my philosophy get translated into the Pacific tectonic terrain with ecologic and the cultural sustainability. I would like to start with this exhibition still showing in MoMA, Reuse, Renew, Recycle, Recent Architecture from China. This exhibition through the, you know, carefully study and observation to discover the younger generation of Chinese architects to try to find, find their own way to approach contemporary architecture based on the rich, the material and the cultural tradition in China. Even ever architects have their own style in terms of the architecture language, but they strongly share the one interest which is ecologic and uh, the cultural sustainability. And uh, their design, not contemporary, but also the strongly root into the Pacific, the Chinese traditional cultural background. The Chinese culture is culture of art. I would like to maybe to use few landscape painting done by Gao Kegong, who is very well you known Chinese Asian landscape painter. Um, probably everybody know during the Yuan Dynasty, the Chinese landscape painting is uh, is represent the highest um, the, the achievement in Chinese painting. Um, the history. So what we can learn from those paintings? For example, I would like to summarize the couple of points. The first of all, nature attitude. The second is my landscape. The third is incomplete integrity. Look at this painting. If you look long and carefully and the painting, we should perhaps began to feel something of spread. For example, this painting, the overall is dominated with nature. If you look at the composition of the overall painting, um, the, the mountain, the fog, the forest, the, the lake, creek, the artificial thing like this small house somehow behind, hiding behind the you know, overall painting. So this strongly reflecting the, the, the Chinese ideology of the new, unity of men and the nature of, uh, you know, very old Asian Chinese the thought. The second is uh, my landscape. Chinese artists never sit down front of the mountain to try to, you know, sketch the, the Pacific, the landscape, they would like to traveling in the mountain maybe for many months. And uh, they, when they came back to home, they would like to try to, you know, catch up the, their experience, their mood, their memories, try to put together on the, you know, like a scroll paper and so on. Also, sometimes they add some, uh, you know, poetry on the on the painting. So this is a it's not to you know try to represent the Pacific landscape instead of a sort of an abstract. They focus on the experience, focus on the what you know reflecting in their mind. The incomplete integrity is first you know deeply in influence my design. For example, look at this painting. It's, um, it's almost like a, the 50% is, uh, is covered by the, the fog, blank. You know, you really hard to, to, you know, to get everything specifically. But uh, this painting is so much inviting, so much welcoming the the people to, 
to participate the creation with artists together. So in other words, the artists would like to leave some room for the people, for the, you know, give the, 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 the people have the strong imagination to welcoming the people working the work together. In other words, this painting going to timeless. This is a depends on who is going to reading this painting and so on. So that the thought is a, is one of the important for the for the for the Chinese Asian art. So I was deeply in you know in, inspired by Chinese art and also the Oriental the the view of. Um, you know, of the nature. So the ideology, the idea is architecture of nature. This is, a, I try to rediscover the root, the found out the some, uh, the visto is in the past history in order to, we can really learn some uh, the smart things. For example, I summarize like two past five points. The, the first of all, we needed to somehow to connect to the, the root, which is a cultural and a climate root. And also the architecture talking about the experience is not just visual art. So create new experience like the painting Gao Ke Gong did. Uh, it's more emphasized, you know, overall the contents, architecture, space, timing, everything, put everything together. So whenever I start to the project, I always, have five, you know, issue in my mind. For example, like sight and orientation. This is very basic, uh, more like a Chinese old uh, idea, like feng shui is talking about uh, the, the artificial things or architecture, how to, you know, negotiate with the site. For example, you need to know where's the sun, where's the wind. Um, the choose the site always back, against the mountain facing to the open field and so on. This is automatically, you know, make your architecture is much more smart, more intelligent associates the solar, the sun, you know, against uh, in summer, maybe against this maybe summer sun protect from rain and so on. This is a very ecologic the idea. But the second is structure and the form. I always try to, you know, to, to make structure form is architecture form. For example, like the poetic and the artistic expression of the architecture form is the, is the real meaning for, you know, what, we, what I'm understanding about tectonic. The sponge architecture is talking about more like a porosity of you know, the, the character, things like what I mentioned, even for the Asian Chinese architecture, they really emphasize the experience. They're always talking about wandering, for example, you're wandering, enjoyable, um, doing nothing, but you can hang on in the architecture through the, the overhead the corridor, pavilion, the courtyard. You know, it's not very clear between the exterior and the interior is not really try to insulate the architecture to you know to to form the the surrounding environment. The cave and the nest is another issue. This is not only to try to understanding the the permanent the two typology of the architecture, but also this is a. a ecologic idea. For example, you know, I found out a lot of the architecture is built based on the cave. And later on, they build a nest and the front in order to, they can try to balance light uh, and some, you know, open and some enclosed and dark. And also the, the cool air, you know, hot air, they can balance each other. They are showing the very strong, the ecologic, the idea. Once you understand this issue, you know, for the contemporary architecture, we have to really think about the architecture 
should be, you know, including the cave and the nest. Incomplete integrity, like I mentioned before, during I mentioned the, the landscape painting. This is, a, is my strong idea. I always try to create architecture is incomplete, the strategy in order to like architecture fully engage, integrate physically with surrounding urban fabric or the wind your architecture is supposed to wave wave from the natural light, wind and uh, you know, sun and so on. And also architecture won't be complete in terms of the program. You have to leave some room, like painting I mentioned before, you have to leave some uh, certain space for like people to imagination, like people to participate. For the architecture, you know, based on architecture point of view, leave some space, leave some room, like people, you know, to engage. We will come the new program or interpretation about the future use in order to you can fully strongly to integrate in terms of the physical form with the surrounding idea and also spatial idea, program idea, and so on. So let's move in order to, um, to you know, to demonstrate the, the idea or my understanding about uh, the architecture. Maybe I would like to use one specific project, Imperial Q Museum, just to realize a few years ago. This view from Relic, Imperial Cume Park, you know, like a relic park, like open field actually underneath is a lot of archaeologists. This is a strong archaeologist side, but you can get a sense what is the Jing De Zheng today. You see the beyond chimney, the factory, and also surrounding historical housing and social housing and so on. The Jing De Zheng located southeast part of China, just 100 kilometer south from Yangtze River. Uh, Jing De Zheng used to be personal capital in the war because it has been produced pottery for more than 1,700 years. During the Ming and the Qing dynasty, the Jing De Zheng export a lot, huge amount of uh, the porcelain to the Europe. Even today, if you, if you go to the Metropolitan Museum or British Museum, you're going to see a lot porcelain from actually produced from the from Jing De, from Jing De Zheng. The summarize, uh, you know, like Chinese the porcelain history during the Song Dynasty, Chai Ru Jun Ge Ding, like like this bottom is five, the 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 highest. Um, the porcelain cube represent the very refined the porcelain achievement in Chinese porcelain history. But the top is uh, produced from Jing De Zheng called the greenish white porcelain. But uh, even during the Song Dynasty, you can compare the, the, the porcelain in, from Jing De Zheng. It's quite a difference with the uh, rest of part of China. So this such very subtle color. This is a, like a jet color and also it's a zen like paper. It's a quite have their own character even in Song Dynasty. This is a Yuan Dynasty. The, there is a revolutionary in terms of the porcelain, the in, industrial is a Gaolin clay was found in the Jing De Zheng region. And then white porcelain has been produced in the first time in human history. And then later on, the darker blue, the clay import from Iran. And then this is a blue and white porcelain became to the signature in the, in the Yuan dynasty. And later on, definitely uh, during the Qing dynasty, the blue and the white porcelain still the symbolic of uh, Chinese porcelain. This is a Ming dynasty, okay? The, the porcelain start to form the blue and white 
into the multicolor. This is like a chicken cup during the you know Ming Cheng Hua. It's it's uh, so you know the detail, the color, and everything. Uh, from the Ming Dynasty, Jing Dezhen became to the Imperial Qin. So this is a star. Since then, a lot of you know porcelain start to export. You know, it's not to transport to the, the, the imperial family, but also export to the, the Europe and so on. Um, during the Qing Dynasty, again, you know, the like three. This is a Jing Dezhen. Maybe you can through this uh, photo to get general sense what is original, the Jing Dezhen, the 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 natural setting always surrounding that by the mountain, you know the city naturally growing because some small village, and then later on a lot of immigration come to here just to, just for the the porcelain industry. But you can get the general sense about you know hill, the water lake, the forest, and so on. So went back to the early the last century. This is an American uh, di diplomatic uh, ambassador uh, of China. You know, in last early the last century, Frank Lenz. He take a lot of photo about Jing Dezhen, and uh, he wrote up his experience. Um, the situation of Jing Dezhen is perfect from Chinese point of view. The beauty. You know, beautiful hill completely surrounding the city, the river bank are dotted with piney and camper trees, while occasional groves of bamboo is lighter green, add a charm and the beauty. I found the softness and the beauty of a typical of another war, a tropical war. So he took he back and forth a lot from Jing Dezhen. You can see the boat is transport, you know, white clay brick and the wood to the surrounding the queue. The early of, um, the, the development of the city of Jing Dezhen start from the further south. For example, if we go a little bit south, is Song Dynasty, Sanbao area. And then during the Yuan Dynasty is Luo Ma Tiao in this area. This is the Ming Qing, the, the city is, uh, is pretty much this region. So city along with, uh, built along with uh, the, the Chang River, uh, used to have another river cross over here and more like uh, two river to generate this city. If you close up this city, this city is not like uh, Xi'an or Beijing or many other Chinese Asian city. This city is somehow to growing, you know, developing based on the personal industry. Uh, the small alley always perpend, you know, decular with this Chang River in order to they can transport their product into the river. And then the big street, uh, the street parallel with this river to bring the market, you know, the, the shop, everything together. But when you walk into the city, you always was, you know, wondering, walking, you know, inside a small alley. This is a very typical small alley to approach to the, the river Changjiang. So a lot of people, you know, bike and forth from the, their porcelain cube to the river. So in order to, they can transport. So look at this uh, very narrow alley. They not only were functional to bring the people to the river, but also they showing the, you know, ecology idea, you know, like a uh, climate idea, for example, like uh, the big uh, over hand, the small alley can create a lot of shadow in summer and create also sort of a internal here, you feel the, you know, very comfortable during the summer since Jing Dezhen is so hot in summer. It's very hot, humid region, you know, things that they have a lot of water rivers surrounding, but cold in winter.
But when you walk into this small alley, they're going to lead you into the, this main courtyard house. This is a vertical courtyard house. Uh, it's a quite very different with Beijing courtyard house, just the one level. This is a somehow like vertical, small, like more like a chimney, the idea to bring the, the air from the bottom to the top. And also strongly, you know, like, uh, again, they create a lot of shadow, you know, protect from the rain and sun during the summer. But winter, they very enclosed. It's, a, you know, somehow it's warm. So this, the more like the, the lot of, the visto, right? It's a kind of a smart idea in terms of the uh, ecological idea to make, you know, people comfortable during the special, the, the hot weather and so on, cold in winter. The early the settlement of the, the Jingdezhen developed along the Qum complex. Qum complex including the, the one brick Qum and also the workshop and also housing. I call this is like uh, the seal the, the seal of the, 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 the city, you know, basically a lot of residential commercial things built along the, the, the brick cube, the, um, you know, basically this is like uh, the one center of the city. For example, a lot of people uh, always in and out here is not only just for work, sometimes for the social, for the meeting place. For example, like winter, during the winter snowing day, the very cold uh, in this region, the student maybe just stolen one, the warm break to put in the bag in order so they can warm the whole day, whole day long. Or sometimes the school even move to the adjacent to the, this queue. You know, break him in order to take advantage from the the, the heat and uh, the su summer people play here. The, a lot of people under the, this uh, canopy, you know, more became to the their the, the social and the meeting place. This became to the you know the neighborhood the gathering the the place. It's not only just. Uh, the, the porcelain production uh, place. When I work on the, the conceptual design, the, the face, I always, you know, walk around the neighborhood. To the, I saw the, the one historical brick kiln was uh, rebuilt, restoration, you can see they use brick to rebuild certain part of the, Historic, you know, historical kiln. So you can see this is a base and uh, use roughly bigger brick. You can see this is a, make a strong base. And then for the for the this shell, it's a brick, the water shell is made by the very light, very small, the brick, which is you can see when they built this kiln without scaffolding, you know, craftsmen just to rely on their experience, they on, uh, rely on their hand. For example, this uh, video showing how they built up this uh, organic shape of the brick kiln from the, the base. Gradually, you can see their finger. If you look at their finger, they control inch by inch. They can you know, use the uh, cross section to form the overall, the organic double curving, you know, like an X shape. So this is, you know, the way how they make this kiln more like uh, when we work on the complicated form today through the computer, we cutting through the milling section in order to transform the compli complicate, the, the, the double curving into the single curving. This is the way how we to, to work today, but actually the similar principle with uh, 
the craftsmen when they work on this, uh, the queue. Now, the significant character for the for the Jing De Zhen is they always recycled the old brick. Things um, the brick queue has been demolished every few years because they have to keep the high temperature to fire the porcelain. And then maybe after 80 times around, maybe like one year or maximum two year, they have to demolish a lot of, you know, this, uh, the, 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 the recycled break, burning the many times break, they just recycle those break to build their housing, build their, you know, even covered street and so on. So this is became to the one of the strong, the tradition, for the for the Jing De Zhen, the the culture. This is a site. This is a, the Imperial King Museum site. It used to be occupied by the fire station and a few uh, the residential, like a five story or six story the residential building, like a complex. And then the fire station has to be moved outside of the city, and then leave the you know space for the museum in order to to create a strong relationship from the this museum to the to the open uh, to the to the the relic the ar archaeology site of imperial kim but uh, over all the fabric when you close up you can see a lot of courtier house uh, like what I mentioned, vertical courtyard, historical house, and also surrounding, you can see a lot of surrounding the, the, the residential, um, the, the housing built uh, in 1990, and uh, it's uh, beyond, it's a big factory. You can see the, the few fa factory, you know, uh, start to showing. It's very complicated urban fabric in terms of the, you know, the, the, the history, you know, and, and everything. So, so this is after we, you know, realized architecture. So the first thing, you, you know, probably you can strongly feel this is this museum is like what I mentioned before. It's a sort of a incomplete in terms of the physical form. It's more like a, you know, like a fragment, the, the form. It's an in and out and zigzag to dialogue with the surrounding urban fabric. And also, you know, the each, the vault structure is the, also misalignment. It's not, per, you know, precise parallel to layout, but you can feel the, 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 the in, incomplete integrity idea, try to weave the, with urban fabric, not only physically, but also uh, in terms of the, the future contents. So try to make this museum much more open to dialogue with sur surrounding neighborhood. Going back to the earlier, the, the concept design, you know, the, the, the idea is why is I try to catch up the, their strong, the, the, the cities, the, the, the strong, the, the, you know, like a, I call that this is more like a be part of their blood. It's a, you know, brick kiln became to the, their, um, the, the city history. The, the local people strongly, you know, realize the, uh, even today, they still try to use historical kiln to birth, uh, to to produce the high, you know, high end porcelain. So this is like what I mentioned before. This is to be part of their, you know, uh, the, the blood. Uh, and also the porcelain came from this, the certain brick cube. They just uh, like uh, uh, eight meters wide, maybe eight meters or 10 meters tall. Is they never getting too big. 
or too small, you, you know, people just working in that hour every day, personally never also too big. So among the people, the porcelain artifacts and uh, the, the kiln, they became to the, the, you know, like a blood relationship, I call. I, I want to rediscover or recreate this kind of a relationship. So early of sketch strongly to show what is my, you know, idea, try to bring this, uh, create a kind of a experience among the cube, the porcelain and the people. And the second idea is more like a ecological route or I call the climate route. For example, uh, I mentioned before the, the local the historical housing, the small alley bring people into the chimney, the vertical, you know, vertical courtyard house. So this uh, the early idea showing the strong attention want to make this building really, you know, climbing the sustainability. For example, their summer wind is south north. So this is a, the, the wall the vault structure along with the north south, the open in both ends in order to bring the air in to light the cold air in summer to concentrate the overall building. This is also showing the porosity character or I call the sponge architecture. And also five, the sunken courtyard, more like five chinimi to create a chinimi effect the horizontal internal and the vertical chinimi uh, effect to weave three dimensional the ecologic the installation to make this building is really ventilated to can protect from the sun for example facing west always solid wall you know the open south and and the north so those idea so in the beginning, I really want to, you know, to rotate this design into the Pacific climate. I call the climate route. And also the, the, the prototype of the, this uh, vault structure is also their cultural route. So conceptual model, you can see we start to use um, multi, uh, uh, you know, more than half dozen the what you know what structure represent the pre you know like a break the cum the the idea so they they generate the dialogue with the surrounding but if you close up this you know difference um the pro, uh, difference of the, the the procedure of our design. Um, for example, if you compare those two models, it's quite a difference. For example, this uh, overall museum, in order to per, you know, preserve this much valuable residential housing, we somehow to set back. And also after start construction, we find out another archaeology site. So this design we have to redesign to, to try to you know, preserved archaeologic site and also integrate our design. And this next cup of um, the physical model showing what is our, you know, idea in terms of tectonic and the construction idea. For example, this, the, the museum design, you feel the com very complicated in terms of the the system. For example, we have total around nine or ten the 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 vault structures. But each one, in terms of the the curvature, the scale is differently. Even you look at the one structure, is this not symmetric? They also is uh, turned to more organic way. So this is really against general, you know, the general understanding about architecture, how we, we have to, you know, based on the system to build, a, you know, the, the same arch, you know, everything. But uh, I would like to 
to try to push this design into the uh, the limit. For example, we use hand to make a model. We not use three D printing. I not allow my the design team to you know use three D print, but uh, as long as we can use a simple cutter or simple material, use our hand. If we can make this model in other world, we probably going to find some uh, smart way to build this complicated, the you know building. For example, you can see this actually this is a the model built, you know based on the the piece by piece of a you know crossing section. You can see this is a basically is built this way more like uh, when the craftsman, when they making the kiln, they just also use a horizontal layer. One break is one layer to achieve this complicated form of the, the kiln. So similar idea and the principle I inspired by the, the whole craftsman, you know, working process. I also invite them to, to be part of uh, our design team to figure out how we can find a simple way, the system to achieve this uh, complicated idea. Once again, and the, the model always is our important design process. Sometimes I'm not a trust computer too much. For example, computer always, you know, to try please the people, try to please people. For example, if too dark, they always give you more light. So you really hard to, to know exactly the, you know, building after build. So the physical model going to give you very sensitive um, the things to let you make a right judgment. So in order to, um, to achieve what, a, you know, I want, so we just keep doing the, you know, in large scale in terms of the model, physical model, we build a small bit bigger, and then even the lot of model is in part in order to, we really want to control everything in terms of the, you know, the, 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 the detail. So this is a model, uh, you know, doing our working process. So this is another model is showing in, in MoMA and this moment is it's more like a porcelain. This is not only the model, this is like a piece of art. I, I consider, I, I just try to use their the, the experience, the, the more like a craftsman, more like their the traditional uh, bluish um, the porcelain in Song Dynasty to represent the Jing De Zhen, the porcelain culture. So this is a amazing the piece. This is a the, the site plan. You can see the surrounding historical factory, the social housing. This is a historical the housing. This is a archaeology site of a Mingqing imperial kiln. So most of the visitors are going to come from the from this open field imperial relic park, and then you hang on, walk on. So, you know, you're going to concentrate some landscape to get on the bridge and then flow into the museum. So overall, this experience is more like, uh, you know, wandering um, to emphasize the moving experience. In terms of program for the, this museum, this museum is built specifically collect the porcelain was produced by the imperial kiln during the Ming and the Qing dynasty. So this is like a, the theme of the museum. This museum is roughly small, but they going to, but they have the big ambition try to build it digitally or network with a British Museum, Metropolitan Museum, and so on. Actually, it's a lot of the, the porcelain right now in the, you know, distributed in the almost everywhere in the world. For example, the program we, you know, basically is a permanent exhibition, uh, focus on the imperial, you know, the 
production and uh, the temporary exhibition uh, maybe for the exchange you know, like program and also we have um, some auditorium also have a coffee tea bookstore we have office here we have a secondary entrance we also have uh, the major people for the permanent you're going to flow this uh, the circulation the temporary go to you can go to the secondary entrance this is office entrance this is like loading the truck can head can go this way even in this area so tiny but we still make a comfortable like truck to turn around back into the, this loading dock in close the door and then the working adjacent is have big elevator to bring the stuff to the down basement level to the storage we also have a you know amphitheater this is a archaeology site is a find out after construction uh courtyard so people are going to flow this way and then you also can choose go to the the bookstore you know cafe and also the auditorium have the secondary entrance you can connect through the lobby foyer you also can open separately to the the surrounding so this is a lower level major is two level lower level played a significant role to the for the exhibition you know for example when you take stair from the upper level you can go all the permanent and this moment, sometimes you can open this door to bring the temporary exhibition be part of overall exhibition circulation, but you also can separately. And then for the larger restoration, the workshop be part of the museum, the, the, the working, daily working, the more like office, but uh, this also can bring in to the, the, the exhibition circulation. For example, people can go out to see how people to work, how people to restore it, you, you know, the old person. This is a, you know, as well. So we can see a lot of courtyard here. So this is a cross section from the, the radic part. And then you, most of the part is go underneath the ground. So this few sketch to represent my the decision making or study about uh, <clears throat> tectonic um, for the this uh, building. For example, in the beginning, uh, we have to make a decision about uh, the material. For example, everybody realized for based on the current code, it's not only in China for almost everywhere in this war. As long as uh, the public building or like museum building, or, you know, based on the code, the vote, break code never can be realized because of the earthquake issue. So we have to think about a different way. If we try to achieve the break, uh, purely break to achieve this vote is going to be probably no way you can realize this building. So the I was inspired by the by the Rome the art. For example, um, Roman art always they they use the maybe the 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 soil or they use the soil like a scaffolding they careful lay on the stone or break and then concrete and then break became to the final layer but for the for the this museum i also try to use this idea for example this is like a wood form and then the, the break layer and then concrete layer the concrete pour in between two layer of uh, this two layer of the break so you can see this is uh, in the beginning we we think about uh, how we can, you know, achieve this museum based on the contemporary uh, architecture, a point of view, and the same moment, we can still to, to use traditional material to make this, the museum work. 
in terms of construction way. So this is a detail of the section. We can see most of um, the lower level ceiling is, is, is going to be the concrete ceiling. You can see this concrete ceiling. And then this is a what the structure is like sandwich, the break, concrete break. And uh, so this is a, even for those, the very complete, complicate arch is going to achieve by the, you know, the break, this construction star, we're doing a lot of, you know, exploration ditch for the archaeology. So this is, a, we found out some important the archaeology side after construction. This is a recycled break. You, when you close up, look at this break, it's so amazingly, you know, you're really hard to know which the, the dynasty this break came from. You just saw a lot of break was gleaved, you know, glazed uh, the beginning from the maybe the break kiln and the, later on the people use them to, to build uh, the housing or, you know, the even the cover on the street. This is like a, the, the, the test and the, more like mock-up, but we actually this mock-up apply on the real the architecture because a uh, real building because we, we run out of time. You can, you can see the, the new break, the recycled, the kiln break. And also, you know, even for the new break, uh, we are use uh, one size, the same size is 23 by nine by three. This is uh, their historical kiln break size, very light, very thin you know, the, in order to we can make this uh, curvature. But um, you can see the, the richness of the, this break when they, the, the masonry together. This is uh, like a, our the idea, we work with uh, the contractor and the manufacturer to develop some kind of a very smart the folding scaffolding system, which is you can see we have this is the a changeable the folding system. The the, the with end is many metal uh, the the rod they can the a change along with the, the curvature change. And then this form is very special. We use so thin the wood form, very soft. They can easily to shape. For example, you can feel how we to shape this. Uh, the, the arch is not only single curving into the double curving. And then top, you know, going to layer on the, the break, the layer became to the permanent formwork for the concrete. So this is a construction. Uh, this is a interior. You can see the concrete ceiling, and uh, for example, it's it's uh, so difficult uh, to build uh, pour the concrete uh, in Jingdezhen region. For example, local is so much thunderstorm and the rain. Once you finished your your wood form, you clear up, you lay out a metal bar, and then thunderstorm come. I just keep wake up by, you know, my staff on site, you know, okay, the, you know, once the rain come, the, we have to clean up again. But eventually, uh, even over bothered by the, the, the technique or the, the very special, the weather, but we still got, you know, what we want, the things uh, for this specific, the, the idea of the design. I never try to, uh, uh, you know, realize this so perfectly in terms of the, the concrete or, or detail. I want to more rough in order to achieve the similarity with the historical, the kiln, the character. So this is a, after the, we realized this building, when you, what, walk on the relic part, you start to approach this museum. So this museum, you never see it overall, really hard. You know, most of the time, you know, only see the one side or part. So this is a, like a, like a grill, uh, the, the, the surface and then stone surface. This is like a bridge 
the two side is like water garden. You can see this is auditorium. The people can go here, go to the lecture room. They can totally open to the public, but also they can, <clears throat> you also can flow into the, this foyer. This is a museum foyer to connect this tea room, the, the book, the, the storage, uh, bookstore, and also, you know, maybe for the beyond, you also can see the beyond factory, uh, the Chinese also many Chinese still remain uh, social housing beyond. Actually, this side is going to be whole, whole, you know historical housing. When you close the up, you're going to was attracted by the 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 uh, the rich texture of the, this the brick vault. You can see the old brick and the new brick, but this is rough texture is make an interesting contrast with this piece for the water garden. This is a beyond have some bamboo. And uh, this is the factory you can see the, the big arch to somehow to dialogue, not only small scale of residential building, but also the, the beyond factory. So this is a, when you close up, you can see the the, the, the stone pretty much underneath the water and uh, make an interesting the, the water garden. You know, I consider this as a, a more like a, a piece of uh, the art installation. Those people is underneath, most of the people underneath the water, more like a, you know, school of the fish, the, the some fish. The, the the bone is pop out. You feel the this uh, more like uh, more Asian Chinese philosophy. They consider the whole universe is like a peaceful water with a three island. We call the uh, Peng Lai Ying Dao, you know, Fang Zhang. You know, it's this is like more old Chinese the 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 the. the philosophy, the, the understanding about this world. So beyond the, ban, the bamboo, the, also the Jiangxi character, you feel when you close up this museum, you can listen, uh, you, you can feel the song, the water song, you can feel the bamboo is uh, sometimes uh, during the wind, they, they produce some, some sound and uh, the bird, uh, everything is very typical, the Jiangxi, uh, impression. So I really want to catch up the sense of, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the vernacular culture. The, the break, you can see this break turn, turn to the interesting, the, the texture, and then this peaceful water, the transparency of building, the bamboo. Um, so everything is, uh, if you, the visit suburbia of Jingdezhen, you're going to feel this way. The bamboo always indicate they're going to have small village or few house adjacent to bamboo surround, surrounding with the mountain hill and the forest. And also you listen, you know, many creek along with you, the river lake, you always see the, you know, you feel the strong, the local culture. This, uh, horizontal photo to showing the tectonic idea. For example, this is a, a long concrete, right? Long spin concrete B and support by the strong column to also the support concrete shell. And this is a mensary brick wall as well. So this is water to showing how this pipe to pop out. Uh, you know, above the water to give you a sense about uh, life. Once you walk in this, uh, this is uh, like a foyer um, of the museum. You can see the, the interesting contrast, the, the glass case with, um, you know, the porcelain uh, with um, the arched uh, vault structure. So this is structure is, is 8.5 meters and, um, and eight meters tall. It's pretty much have a similar the scale with uh, historical, the brick kiln. So this arch going to, you know, inviting you to the, 
to the the bookstore. So for the these two cards, actually, this is a uh, you know during the design process, I'm really appreciate the the Kenny Professor Kenny Frampton. You know, we have some discussion about uh, how we you know achieve the interesting light for the interior. This is a, his one of the, his suggestion. In the beginning, I try to use use another vault to connect to to you know to arch the structure but we feel you know too heavy and then we cut this slide so and also during the time the Stephen Hall we we have a lot of conversation actually this is associates Columbia you know culture GSAP culture you know uh, things uh, 2016 I was taught the, the advanced studio in our school and uh, during that time, I work on this conceptual design. So this is a, the, the porcelain actually excavated from the adjacent archaeology side. This is a, maybe in this world only one. So they never uh, perfectly done. So this is the reason they broken up this uh, stuff because this is not really fun. Uh, but today, the people, re, you know, we restored showing on the or the exhibition room. So you can see the one vault structure and then going to another one and then another one. So the sequence of the space always floating is, I call it, this is a more like a, the, one of the character of the sponge architecture. When we from standing on the other side, you're going to get a sense which way is going to important? They implate some um, indicate some um, how you moving. For example, when you walk in this the, the foyer, you're going to this is a big arch in this you know structure. This secondary, and then another the one to lead you to the auditorium in the third one. So even the arch, we carefully study light, we carefully study, uh, for example, you can see the top of the light is also reflecting the, the historical brick kiln. They also have a observation, the, the hole is like a cylinder, is so they can see the fire color in order to, to know what's the temperature. Sometimes they also through the the wood from those uh, holes. So I'm just, I just uh, interpret this idea into the natural light, but also combine some artificial light. So you can see we are use a different way to present work. So this is a before the, the installation come, this is after, you can feel from the foyer interior space, and then you walk to the semi outdoor space. This is a covered by vault structure, but this is not interior. So this is a perfectly for the for the porcelain museum. Maybe not work for the art museum since we need the humidity control for the art museum. But personally, never fear about the raining water and so on. So this is a, under this cover, you're going to see the beyond the auditorium, um, amphitheater, which is, a, but this is a small theater, amphitheater. And also people also can go down here to, to close to the, the archeology span side after, you know, found after construction. This is an amazing photo to pretty much represent the, my idea is to just want to use uh, the inward outward the arch to create a in out light dark you know semi you know more like a porosity the the museum even you standing on the archaeology side you also can through this arch to see beyond courtyard for, for example, this is glass. You also can, you know, to feel the, the, the something, you know, behind. You was attracted or invoked by many things going to, you know, to come to in your mind. You also can, 
you know, look at, look through this window to, to see the beyond courtyard, the sunken courtyard and also lower level. So this is amphitheater, you know, for example, this is perfectly for the people's gathering. I think they have a lot of ring and sound. Um, you know, once you're standing here or sitting here, you feel so much relaxed since uh, the wind going to concentrate. You even more hot weather, you still feel the, the com comfortable. This is a, you, you know, the idea. I was also feel, strongly feel that during the construction, the so hot in summer, I always try to break underneath this cover. You feel the wind cold wind going to concentrate. So this building is pretty much showing this uh, sponge idea to, to create the many things to associate people's mind, people's body, people, you know, people's eye, for example. Everybody can find out the place belong to you. You can feel the comfortable or Hanan, for example. This is a we also have um, from the this uh, amphitheater also take stair go to the you know the sunken courtyard you can see the layer this is a, the courtyard you can uh, you can you can go actually it's outside of uh, the permanent exhibition and uh, this is the biggest courtyard we're showing the lot of foundation which is Ming dynasty the the building foundation you know beyond is a temporary exhibition and then from the semi outdoor space you're going to inside again so in general the overall the open arched structure and the enclosed arch structure was arranged and interval from each other you know like a like an interior semi you know, exterior and then interior again. So this is subtle stair going to bring you to down to the lower level. Even this side without courtyard, but we bring the natural light. We have a, the cut bring the natural light, small atrium in order to bring people to flow this way as well. So this door, what I mentioned before, going to connect with a temporary exhibition. Even this uh, simple glass case designed by our team, because we really want to make overall exhibition is so minimum. You know, this glass case is almost nothing. You know, a lot of labeling is under this uh, transparent space or on the glass, but uh, we, we try to against the typical person in museum you know, basically everything against the wall, you need a, a board, you need an image or, but museum without character. For example, in Qingdezhen, there is a big ceramic museum built uh, like five years ago. I consider this museum perfectly for the aircraft or the car, in a huge grand space, darker space, like square, space once the small porcelain is really small person really small you feel this is not built for the person no any relationship with person artifact you you just uh, always happen in our you know architecture i feel you know, for this museum, try to read against, you know, try to find some um, unique way or revolutionary the idea to make this museum is more unique to create a consanguinity among the porcelain people and this architecture. So when you flow down, when you're stepping down, you're going to see the sunken courtyard. And then this is what I mentioned, the, the atrium light door is open, going to connect uh, with a temporary exhibition. So the vault structure is going to challenge to how you arrange your glass case exhibit. So um, I think about, you know, I feel the, the this space more like fish belly 
but uh, why we not use use fishbone to organize the uh, or glass case to light people for example you can see this is a, like a fishbone the, the the glass case structure along with this arched the the structure more like a another relationship right is uh, we always talking about the unity of the men and the nature this is a unity you know of the porcelain men and the architecture you feel um, those porcelain is not isolated you feel more like the burning from the you know, they come from the you know they stay where they come from more like this you know experience once again this courtyard you can also go out to the courtyard this is a restoration room that's so also be part of your exhibition the circulation this bamboo forest to, to create very poetic um, the sense of feeling also Jiangxi this is another the small courtyard house we standing the overhand roof actually this is a multi-function room and the cross that is called small courtyard you can see the permanent exhibition gallery also opened the tea room area so back again, this is a, the, the, the glass case to present the work, but you always see the beyond. You can see this is a beyond uh, the courtyard. We also have stairs go up. So this is a people love, you know, how the space because they have uh, so transparent. For example, I realized the person is very different the painting or artwork. So they need a showing underneath the natural light. That's first, uh, I feel, strong feel. Second, they needed to see from the 360 degree. They not only see the top, see the one side. They need to, people need to walk around, also need to see the bottom. When you see down here, you can see the bottom. Bottom have always important indicate the which year this, uh, the porcelain was produced. The material is a so minimal approach, concrete, brick, wood, uh, pretty much. So you can see this is a, uh, a very straightforward. When you bike, you know, to the to to the gallery, this is a, the, 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 the end of our old permanent exhibition. It's, a, it's the tallest space in, in the museum. This is a, maybe more like the, the almost 12 meters high high ceiling space so beyond is the cold check and also have connect auditorium room so you can take this stair go up you know to the maybe you can see here you already realized you're going to climbing up the stair go to the top level so once you in the you know middle of the stair you feel the very difference with a typical staircase, enclose the staircase. The stair always concentrate or flow between two arch the structure. For example, this is one arch, this is another one. The stair always in between, you see the light, uh, you know, brush on the rough, this um, misery, the brick wall, you can see this is a mixed, the, the break, you know, under, you know, brush under the natural light. This is a really linear horizontal cut. So the main light is turned to uh, into the difference scenario. For example, this is many arch to work together. So eventually you're back to the foyer again. So you complete your overall circulation. And then you can also from the foyer to go to the small foyer of the auditorium small lobby you also can from the outside to meet people here and then you go into the auditorium auditorium this auditorium is more like uh, the one moment you feel the the the, the overall break cube for example break cube always two level top level is people working on 
maybe watch the fire temperature and so on. The lower level people in now to move in the, the prototype of the person into the queue. And, and so on. So this auditorium is also showing this similar experience. We have uh, almost like a, like a two level, lower level and uh, you know, top level. And then the form, the interesting, the, the light like cube. So you feel that this more spatial, uh, not only just a very functional, you know, auditorium. And uh, this lower level also reflecting the, you know, the this space composition also uh, reflecting the historical cube to one way lower, one way higher in order to the heat flow to into the final point, which is chaining me bring the air up. So this horizontal card became, and also the vertical card became to the one character for the overall museum. Since uh, the, the structure, the principle not allow you to, to, to doing many things on the, the vault side. You only can make open both sides, but this is uh, automatically the follow the, the, the local sound angle, for example, this is a, facing the west. We're only doing the horizontal cut to against the sound. Uh, the people also can feel when you look all through this horizontal cut, you, you see the water garden and also beyond the archaeology side of Imperial Q. So this is a before the permanent uh, the installation expert in so you can see the arch connect this is a, like a tea room so people you know once you walk into the, this uh, semi the outdoor space you was attracted by the, this water horizontal cut you attempt to sit down you know much lower you, you know you can see through uh, you know focus on the, the horizontal surface of the the archaeology side. So archaeology always talking about underneath the earth. So here is much more like a long scroll painting to let people sit down here to focus on VR. So this is from outside. The, the water garden is uh, very intimate dividing the public space with museum space. So people, you can hang here and you feel very comfortable, you know, to engage with nature. So next few slides is pretty much showing the, the, the porosity character of this design. You can see this is a, the, the, the wind can be concentrated, right? This arched structure somehow misalignment. This is not perfectly perpendicular particular or parallel to layout. This somehow is a dialogue with surrounding the historical neighborhood, sunken courtyard, uh, like uh, even this enclosed, but this door, but this uh, wood, the window can be automatically open to become to the, bring the, the wind, you know, like wind concentrate or all structure. So after your, finish your experience, you start to, to, you know, to, to lead, and then you still feel the poetic, the peaceful, the architecture is layered down and side. It's, uh, it's more horizontally, more, you know, kind of uh, uh, the peaceful to try to, this curvature, try to dialogue with this uh, natural hue around Okay, so maybe we can start the, the, the video, please.
Wow, well, um, thank you very much, uh, Xu Pei. Uh, what a tour de force. Um, and thank you for this inspiring presentation about this uh, beautiful, captivating project. Um, I, I just wanna observe that it's so generous of you to take us through the detail and the nuance of your project. Um, at a certain pace that's um, it just, uh, I think it's, it's really uh, fascinating to see and revealing for, for, for me, for our students um, about the, all of the details of the project and the way it kind of came to life. Um, you know, one of the things I'm thinking about in watching this presentation and thinking about your work is the role of time in your work. Um, 
you know, I think in many ways you're expanding the time scale um, of what we typically consider for an architectural project. So, you know, in a way we could say um, this project that you've just shown us involves a time span of uh, 2000 years or so, um, while a typical contemporary project might involve, you know, a, a time span of 100 years or, or 50 years. And I'll expand on that a little bit. Um, I, I think um, you, you kind of draw on time in so many ways and, and maybe I'll cover how I think you're addressing time and materials, also time and culture, and also time and environment. So, you know, with time and materials, of course, you showed us how you're working in the context of a material porcelain that's been produced on this site or in this area for more than 1,700 years. And that's, um, you know, just such an amazing uh, thing to consider in an architectural project at time span like that. Um, and then at the same time, you're designing with a repurposed material, essentially giving a, a material a new life, giving this brick a new life. Um, and as I understand it, potentially this happens over and over. So these bricks may have been used in not only one previous building, but a building even before that. Um, uh, and, and this incredible idea that bricks, you know, that you may find in, in this uh, city, um, could be traced to many different dynasties um, as you, you know, encounter them. And they're still part of the built environment. They're a resource for new buildings. Um, and this, I think, connects in this beautiful way to both um, what I understand as a kind of traditional process of material reuse, um, but also I think uh, it connects very much to future-oriented um, discussions about circular economy and this uh, you know, increasing recognition that buildings could be considered material mines. Ma buildings are a place where you can go to mine materials. You don't have to just mine materials uh, from the side of a mountain in terms of new iron ore to create new steel, but you can mine an existing building for materials to make uh, a new building. So this contemporary concept of circular use of materials but you're connecting that back to a more traditional process. So that was kind of time and materials. And for time and culture, I think you showed us how um, you're drawing on so many things, but including um, painting from hundreds of years ago, um, traditional concepts of nature, your really fascinating um, idea of uh, uh, incomplete integrity. Um, and then when we get closer to the, you know, the building, you're drawing on older typologies of the small alleys that you showed us and courtyard housing. And of course, the layers of history and archaeology on the site um, with these kind of ancient constructions in the lower level that are kind of unearthed and shown to us. Um, but you're certainly also bringing, you know, that time span all the way to the present and the future with contemporary methods and aesthetics and processes. Um, and then the third category maybe could be time and environment. So you showed us and told us about um, in this context, how there are, um, ve there's vegetation or there are trees from different ages from the newer bamboo trees to older, bigger trees. And I guess maybe we could even say to like the much more ancient mountains themselves as part of a natural landscape. Um, so that was, that's one kind of time scale of environment, but then also I think um, you showed us this very functional, uh, but also beautiful use of environment through the flow of air in different seasons or even over the course of a day into night. And so it's like, again, a different scale, all of these different time scales um, that you're exploring. So I think it's just, um, you know, a really fascinating project and a, a great invitation to maybe all of us to um, think more carefully and creatively about, about time in architecture on a number of levels. Um, I wanted to 
you know, ask, you know, one or two questions and we're certainly um, inviting audience members to um, add a question as well as I think you see in, in the chat. Um, but I guess my first question, I want to return to the brick. I mean, I love the brick so much. Um, yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's just so, so it has a beautiful installation for PS1. I saw that. Uh, well, I love bricks. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. I, I once talked to Ken Frampton quite a bit about bricks too, and I'm glad you and he talked about bricks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, but this, you know, it's so amazing. All of the various effects that you created with the bricks and your various uses. Um, but but I'm also just wondering. I have a couple of kind of practical oriented questions about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with this recycled brick, which gives so much to the project and has such a, you know, weight in, in its kind of material presence. Um, uh, I, I wonder if there are also challenges with it, um, you know, and, and I'm connecting this a little bit to, you know, if we can generalize about sustainability and circular economy. So in repurposed materials, um, I think one of the one of the challenges has been that they're messy and they're non-uniform and they have, you know, just practically speaking, little bits of mortar stuck to them or some of them are kind of cracked or, you know, just again, practically, they don't come with the same kind of warranty or uniformity <laughs> that, yeah is easier to work with. So I wonder if you could just, um, you know, you make it look so natural and it's of course incredibly stunningly beautiful and you make it seem kind of effortless, but I wonder if um, behind the scenes there were some challenges to, or, or even just the creativity of deciding how to, which bricks went where, where did you get the bricks from? Did they have to be inspected or cleaned in the process? And then who made some of the final decisions about, um, you know, how to how to how to stack the bricks? Um, was that the craftspeople that you described? I love the idea of bringing them in early, um, yeah. or did you try to provide drawings that g gave an indication of which bricks went where and how? Mm -hmm. I know that's a very detailed question, but I'm just so fascinated right, right. by the process. But, yeah, but uh, the the detail. The question always a tough question, you know, always to really hard, you know, during the, the construction process is a very hard decision making. And for example, exactly like what you said, recycle break, they have the history, they have the, you know, the very interesting way, but they came out, it's so unstandardly, right? Things um, even, there's some break, they have two pieces of break, they glazed together, maybe during the burning or everything. So basically most of the break, we just pick up, you know, we like people pick up, but some break may be too fat. For example, after burned, they have glazed on the top too much. And then we have certain cutter, which we have to cutter Maybe I don't know, 10% or 5% that break needs polished. You know, we have to make sure they're not too big. Uh, but if you close up to see the realized building, but our line still is not very perfectly done. So this is one thing. But secondly, it's uh, pretty much is like uh, uh, how we organize, you know, I'm not trying to draw the word specifically like people to work really hard things during the construction, maybe like almost like 80 people, 100 workers to work on same. There are some people have experience, break experience, most people not. And uh, so what we control is basically just uh, one people, uh, one, you know, craftsman surrounding, you know, like, uh, like a three group break, new break, uh, basically it's a new break, all the break. And uh, just like a really, like a body really, he can reach on. And then for example, maybe like, like a one uh, old break, uh, even old break always small, 
compare it. Things they they fragment. Did. So maybe like a three piece old one, the one new one, or maybe two new one, one. So basically, but definitely people always make mistake. Mistake is good, right? It's or two maybe. So they just by chance, sometimes it's old break to last. They use, they, they, in order to some work want to faster, more efficient, they use more new break. Some, some is maybe more dedicated. They use more. Old. <laughs> so for example, that make interesting eventually. Yeah. Uh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I, I can totally imagine that that you could go back, go look at the building and read kind of the the yeah. the, the handprint in a way, the metaphorical yeah. handprint of different workers. Mm -hmm. Um I had one other question and it's a, maybe a little bit related, but I I, I really appreciate that you brought us into your design process um, and how you design and all of the things you were doing and thinking about and considering. Um, and, you know, in particular, I was thinking about the different uh, media that you use or, um, you know, from, you showed us um, uh, the two key sketches at the beginning, um, the, the kind of, Maybe we could call it the typology sketch, um, drawing on the traditional kiln forms, and then the environment sketch with the flow of air. Um, and then uh, a little later, you mentioned the the use of the computer, um, and and you you had this great way of framing it that um, the computer is always trying to please you, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that's such a great way to think about it. Because of course the computer is non-human, but it's, it's totally, you can see that it's trying to please you by compensating, trying to give you the type of image it thinks you want to see. <laughs> um, but, but, a, but just exactly because it's trying to please you, you don't totally trust it. Um, so, <laughs> so you go to the, the physical model, um, because there's something about, I think, I think this is what you're saying that, you know, if you can make it in the physical model through the simple processes of like cutting and attaching, then you can probably figure out the way to construct it without a bunch of huge complexity. And, um, um, and so uh, I, I wanted to, uh, go into a little level of detail there too. And my apologies if I'm asking for all the, too, too many details, but um, I, and then I, I'm interested in the, the way that you translated those physical models where we can see you resolving some of the form and um, uh, figuring things out about the design. So how do you translate from those physical models, which were made in a certain way with a certain material and a cutting, those, we could see those bands of the model, um, to what I understand was maybe the first layer of the, of the full-scale physical construction, which was this thin wood layer, right. cool. um, yeah. which, which was a little formable, I understood. But, but I wanted to go a level deeper and, and ask, how did, how, did, how did those wood forms, which had to, as, as you were describing have this double curvature at some places and these arches are not just a uniform extrusion they have to there's a lot of amazing subtlety in them mm -hmm. so when you were forming that was there any kind of it, how was that being checked and was was there some computation behind the scenes there or was it um through measurement and what was there kind of a, a new specialized labor that then maybe integrated with the more traditional labor of the hand stacking mm -hmm. of the bricks or, or what were those steps? Yeah. So this is a quite a challenge. We do a lot of mock-up the field, but uh, eventually this is okay. So basically probably I mentioned the scaffolding system. This scaffolding system is can be, can be adjustable. Uh -huh. And uh, for example, they have uh, made in like uh, the metal rod, uh, you know, like a steel bar to, to base on the point through the computer, you know, to catch up the double curving point. Those rods going to reach to the, the, the wood form. 
So that wood form was very soft. So, and also we not use whole thing, right? We use new knit piece by piece. So one piece, they roughly can achieve the subtle curving, double curving surface. So things your rod is can be adjustable based on the, the point you want to how long. So we basically just uh, soft the wood form with this uh, adjustable scaffolding system can be really make this the, the subtle curving, you know, like shape. After this, the things whole, you know, the, 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 we, we're just doing the piece by part by part. Interesting. Okay, I see. That's that's very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. And I can see, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense that the that you created the physical mock-ups to test out mm -hmm. the fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, incredible results. Um, I had one more quick question and then we'll see um, you know, if there are some uh, additional questions from the audience, but I want to return to, to your concept of incomplete integrity. Mm -hmm. um, it's really provocative for me. Um, and I, I think I was following how um, aspects of that could be traced to some of the paintings you were showing early on. Um, and as I understand it, maybe in, in your building, the incomplete integrity is related to your, um, your forms, which you described as kind of incomplete physical form. I mean, maybe yeah. like not a totalizing monument, but more uh, uh, like a fragment of, a system maybe and with um we can see the the different scales and uh proximities and sometimes adjacencies or intersections and and then you even describe like deliberate misalignment um but i wondered if, if you might elaborate a little on that concept of incomplete integrity and maybe also um describe for us whether this is um a concept or, or or a technique of yours that's generalizable to to many types of architecture to your um, kind of understanding beyond this project and to um, the city as a whole and that you know could be something that others could pick up or how much of it was specific to this project? Right. Okay. The incomplete integrity is one of the most important my design principle. You know, I strongly believe architecture is the art, is, uh, which is they, you know, after they build, this is not finished. They need a waiting for some program to, to integrate together, waiting for the people, waiting for the light, and also waiting for the timing to interpret into the future, how we can make architecture is uh, timeless. I feel incomplete integrity is the good strategy. Um, for example, the, like a physical way we can make our form is more like uh, incomplete in order to, 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 you know, to integrate another part to newly uh, you know, to to unitate, you know, another part. For example, like when we see the the moon, right? Is a uh, uh, when the full moon is 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 no imagination, but uh, when they close to full, it's quite interesting. Since uh, I feel the architecture is very special art. It's not a visual art, not a, you know sculpture. They kind of. Uh, you know, it's like a yin yang Chinese. They waiting for something to working together to finish. So you have to realize the specialty of the 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 the, the architecture art is very differently with with others. So physically, like a form, but also is mentally for or I call the spiritually. For example, the people. You know, they want to interpret by themselves. They want to find some space belong to him. So you cannot to make everything so clarified. 
in terms the the space program or the everything. So we have to leave some room. So I feel through the physical way or mental way or I don't know, but but I feel just the let be part of my fundamental design principle. Yeah, I I really love that, and you know maybe maybe just to um, make a last observation about it. I think it's it's quite um, remarkable that you can you know give us a building that is both so um, you know sophisticated and um, uh, you know seems so resolved in one respect. Um, but in the other respect that is, seems to be so um, deliberately open-ended, you know, in, with, your, with your concept of incomplete integrity, um, to be completed by the user, the program, um, to, to leave certain things about the form, but also the use, and maybe the material lifespan, to leave those to be determined and completed by others. And that, that seems so, um, you know, remarkable and, and magical. So um, thank you. Um, I believe um, Wei Ping may want to jump in at, at this point um, and we'll okay. also, uh, yeah, monitor for any audience questions. So go ahead, Wei Ping. Okay, all right. Thank you, David. Yes, thank you very much, Shufei. Really appreciate it, yeah. Yeah, thank you both. Um, so, Jupe, uh, I must say that your last response to David really echoed how I was feeling when I was watching your video. Mm -hmm. I studied architecture, I don't know, three decades ago, and I returned all whatever I learned back to my professor. So today was really another learning experience. And you're absolutely right, this, this, this feeling that to be you know, garnered by the visitor, right? So I almost feel like I was in the religious sphere when I was watching that video. And the, ser the serenity, the ningjing, and, and, and really was quite touching. Um, so I'm very curious also, so my first question kind of follows David's question, right? The, in terms of the details of the physical structure and curvature of the building. My question has to do, did you imagine a certain kind of spatial uh, uh, impression? And then as you built it, you know, from a small model to scale, has that kind of um, impression changed for you? Uh, and whether you um, were able to create the kind of spatial experience, at least for you uh, in reality, uh, more or less fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I think the the whole design process is a dynamic. It's not a frozen frozen and a, you know moment. I think during the design process, uh, you keep uh, to dialogue in your mind. What is after view? What is the reality? You know what you know what's after after realize. Uh, the people go going to have uh, you know opportunity to enjoy or you you know for example um, I feel always to to a judgeable you know to make you know when you're facing the the some issue your your decision making is always to to you know, dialogue with the, the, the some Pacific, the, the challenge. Yeah. And so uh, my second question has to do with the video that was shown at MoMAR, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the brake laying was detailed step by step. And it just looked like the workers had so much skill, right? Because uh, every break when to form the arch, um, mm -hmm. you have to space them in a certain way and there's fillings in between to uh, make the curvature. So mm -hmm. I what was very interested in knowing, were you able to find workers with that kind of skill 
fairly quickly and readily? Or is this the kind of skill that has a long tradition in Jindezhen? Or is it began to be lost? Uh, because I noticed the workers tend to be older uh, in mm -hmm. the video, at least. Mm -hmm. And so was there a, an element of sort of um, preserving this kind of skill in the building uh, of the museum as well? Uh, I think this very special, the technical tradition is not uh, you know, until today, it's not many people to know that. This is more like a family, the, the things. It's not many people to have the knowledge to build traditional brick kiln anymore. It's not many people. Um, I feel, you know, I was inspired by the, the how they achieved um, use very simple way, simple material, use, use their hand to achieve the very complicated the, the, the architecture form. For example, double curving like an X is really hard. Even today, it's very hard to build. But uh, I realize, you know, I, I carefully study how they achieve that, how they cutting the, the cross section, how they use finger to inch by inch to change the radian and so on. And uh, I feel, you know, when we achieved our the museum, basically the principle we use similar, but uh, definitely the technical are different things. So uh, our structure is like sandwich, is is concrete, is major structure. Uh, so that's quite a difference, like, but um, I feel, yeah, definitely it's the inspiration is uh, so important. This is a the relate to the topic today, right? Root of the mind is the one way you not try to rebuild based on the root. You not try to okay, I I just build the historical kiln, but they never work for the people, right? They build for the person, not for the people. So root of the mind means you have to really find out their wisdom, their intelligent idea to work with you in terms of the contemporary work. So this is uh, what the topic means. Basically, you point out the tonight's topic, root of the mind, to rediscover, but you need a, somehow, like a painting, right? You never draw the Pacific mountain. You draw the mountain in your mind, your experience. Yeah. Well. Uh, I think that could be a, a perfect place to wrap up in a, in a kind of fitting, yeah. going full circle all the way back to the title of the lecture. But I think we can certainly see what you're talking about and what you had introduced at the very beginning, that it's a combination of drawing on history, but also bringing in the contemporary. And I think also, as you're describing, making it one's own through that that kind of metaphorical act of um, drawing it from, from your own mind, not from sitting right in front of it. It, it really provocative to I think all of us in, in our way of working. And our students, as you may know, are um, preparing for their final reviews. So it's a good inspiration for them, um, <laughs> okay. fuel for their yeah. final effort. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you once again. What an incredible lecture and incredible project. And thanks for being with us and making the time from far away to join us here in New York. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, David, you know, Weiping, and everybody, the staff, and to organize such a great event. I'm so honored to be here to share my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, really appreciate Thank you again. Okay, thank you. Bye. Hopefully, we we'll see well. you as a, in the near future. Okay. Yes. Yes. No longer quarantine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hope for that. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.